but. So it's really apropos that I'm here with you tonight because that is the theme for this hour. We're gonna to touch upon all of those th themes with our guests that are coming on tonight. We are gonna have such a great time. So a couple years ago, I was given a gift. Maybe it was a gift by Hashem, God. Maybe it was a gift given to me by my husband, but it was a gift or rather a hobby that has kind of changed the trajectory of my life. And this was the gift. There I was a couple years ago, I had lots of little kids and I was trying to do my thing, women's empowerment, bringing women together, connection, unity. And off I was running into a taxi to go off on a trip or a retreat. I don't remember the details. And I was really nervous. I was feeling guilty. I was holding so much anxiety and leaving the kids and mommy don't go. And I, and my husband stopped me before I got into that Uber or that taxi. And he said, Eve, he held me by the shoulders. He said, Eve, find their light. That's all you need to do. That's your gift. So ever since then, that's what I do in the world. I just look for people's light and it's not hard to find it. Everyone has a beautiful light. I look for it, I find it, and then I hold up a mirror to the woman in front of me and show them their light. We women, we need to hold up a mirror for our friends, for our sisters, for everyone in front of us in our circles. We need to hold up that mirror and show them their greatness because women are power. Women are builders and connectors. We, we're seekers. We seek spirituality. We seek elevating the mundane. That's what we spend our whole lives doing. And I must admit that I am a little bit of a unity junkie, you could call me, let's say. I love being part of big things. I love unity rallies, everything, anything that has to do with unity. And I'll tell you the moment I realized that this was, this is what lights my fire. It was on a momentum trip to Israel many years back, maybe eight or nine years ago. It was on Friday night at the Western Wall, surrounded by hundreds of women from all different countries. On that particular trip, there were a hundred Russian women and they were speaking different languages all around me. I didn't know whose hands I was holding. I didn't know anyone that next to me. We were all just so many people crowding together and tourists and, 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 and chayalat soldiers with their guns strapped around their shoulders protecting us. And it was in that moment that we were all united that I realized this is exactly what it's all about. Unity, unity without uniformity. We don't all have to look the same. We don't all have to serve the same. Our kids are raised differently. Each child is different. We're, we're all different. We look different. We speak different languages. We come from different places, but we're all one. We're all so connected. So I love participating in the Shabbos project every year. I've been doing it since its inception. My husband happens to be South African. So we got into it from the get-go. And I love being a part of Project Inspire because they're bringing Jews together. They're all about achdut, unity. So that talks to me. It lights my heart on fire. Project Inspire has so much in store for you tonight. And one of the amazing things, they're putting this raffle, this, I don't know, this great incentive on social media. You could go to Facebook and Instagram and like them and enter to win great prizes. This is all happening now. They just want you to be connected. They're giving away this beautiful menorah. There's so much going on with prizes and incentives. They just want us to come in and say, we're a part of something huge. So after this one hour together, stay where you are, hold on to your seats because Charlie Harari is coming back in and ladies, you are in for a treat. We're gonna kick off tonight with my dear friend, Shantel and tell us. So this is my one rule. If music comes on, you need to get out of your seats. You need to move around. You need to dance. We sit all day in front of our screens. It's time to move and to have some fun. Let's hit it. Let's hear Shandel. She's going to come back later and be with us live. I gotta tell you that there aren't many others Like my Jewish sisters and my Jewish brothers You gotta know that there's a spark deep inside you And there will never ever be anyone like you Jump, 
jump higher, you can touch the sky Sing a little louder and let your color shine You are perfect in God's eyes I'm, 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 I'm your Srobo High From New York to Spain, London to LA Joburg, Miami She was also my student, if I could say so, many years ago. And so is our next guest that's coming on right now, Stephanie Pollock. And it's kind of funny to say they're my students. If anyone here is 40 and above, you might remember this Oil of Olay commercial in maybe the 90s. <laughs> and that commercial was like this beautiful lady and this, guy, this man comes in and says, you look so familiar. And she says, I was your teacher. So that's kind of how I feel with these amazing women. I have so much nachas from, from all my students. So right now we're gonna introduce Stephanie Pollock, who, as I said, was my student, but now she has become my teacher. And she is just an incredible person. Stephanie Pollock has become a powerful, modern woman's Jewish voice. She has touched audiences by sharing her quest towards self-actualization as she works through challenges grief and loss, and reframes them as opportunities for growth. Her mic drop and YouTube and her features on podcasts have inspired thousands with her personal and touching messages of resilience, perseverance, and hope. Stephanie is accredited by the International Coaching Federation as a life coach. Come on, uh, come on, Stephanie. Hey, it's so Hi. good to see you. This is unbelievable. I am so honored to be part of this 
of this amazing Women's Power Hour. And I just want to say, this is actually my third year in a row participating in an Aish Shabbos Project Cholabek situation, which is so unbelievable to me. That's right. Thank you so much. We love that you're a part of this. Me too. So let's get started. I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your story. We only have a few minutes and there's so much to learn about so much you. To unpack. Jump right in. Okay. So, um, okay. So much to say, so much to, you know, to unpack, but let's go back as, um, let's go back recently. Uh, the last 10 years, 10 years ago, um, I got married to a beautiful neshama of a person and I, seven months into marriage, surprise, I'm pregnant. Um, it wasn't, plan, but you know, planned, but God has better plans. And now 15 months into marriage, um, another surprise came to the surface. I found out that my husband was struggling with an addiction problem. And I just felt that my whole world was just in turmoil, absolute turmoil. And, um, from that moment, this is right before I had my son, from that moment um, until about two and a half years later, when he passed away, I was feeling, I went through this, like this spectrum of feelings. I started off by feeling emptiness, isolation, an enormous amount of pain and, and hopelessness. But then over time, there was something that, that, that sort of, that, that there was a slow switch that took place. And I always kind of reference the story of, of a tzaddik dies and he goes up to Olam Haba into the world, in the world to come after 120. And he sees that everything is, is upside down. And he asks God, why is everything so topsy-turvy? And God says, no, 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 you're actually in the world of the right side up. You're an ulama emet. You're in the world of truth. And that's kind of what I had experienced over that time. I went from feeling that, that emptiness, that isolation, that pain and that hopelessness. And I slowly began to experience a life of community, of, of, of understanding what joy actually means, a uh, connection, personal connection and a spiritual connection with God. And also I found hope in my life. And um, it was, it was it, 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 the whole experience in and of itself took over a, a long period of time, but it was interesting to see that shift in my life. Wow, that's so beautiful, Stephanie. And that's we, the really abridged version of it all. Abridged. We'll have to look you up on YouTube and all of that afterwards. Where are you right now in your life? So right now, um, I moved out of South Florida very recently, and I am now in New Jersey and um, with so much. And, you know, one, one of the things we were talking about yesterday, Eve, is how did I get there? How did I get to this place? Um, I got to this place, number one, with, with time. Um, my late husband passed away over six years ago. And there was a lot that was experienced over that time, over the, the, the past 10 year, 10 plus years. Um, and I also got here with a lot of patience and willingness to continue to wake up every day. You know, Viktor Frankl says, and I'm going to probably quote Viktor Frankl a lot, you know, when you, I'm, I'm not going to do it verbatim, but if you have your, your why, then you can, you can overcome any how. Wow. And that's truly what has happened. My son, it was my how, my, my finding that it was more exhausting to be in a state of depression of to just to be complacent was more exhausting in my life. But not just that, the most important thing for me in my life and how, where I am, you asked me, you know, I could be physically in New Jersey, but where am I and here? Where am I here? I am, I, I've, I've learned to recognize that the hand in God and everything in my life, truly. Wow. Wow. The Hashkacha Pratis that God has presented me with. And not only that, it's the gratitude. Wow. It's being able to express the gratitude and seeing it. Um, 
that's where I am in my life, where I could see the puzzle pieces to my life clicking. And even if some of them, you know, if you have an old puzzle and the, the pieces, the cardboard's like spread apart, but they still kind of go together. Yeah. That's me in my life. My, my beautiful, you know, masterpiece, that's the work in progress, may have some bumps and elevated areas, but it, it truly is turning into a masterpiece because God has put these puzzle pieces into my life. Hmm. Wow, Stephanie, that's so powerful. Thank you for sharing. Gratitude is really what you leaned on to get you through such a hard time. And I express it every day. And, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I, you know, I write several gratitude lists a day. I want I, every night, this was something I started over a year ago and it was on my late husband's year site that I, that I decided to do this. I started posting a gratitude list and I write three things every day and I write the good, the bad, and the ugly because I can see the learning opportunities in each one. And I could see how it all, and I write, it could be as simple as that last little sock in your laundry load fitting into it. So you don't have to start a whole nother load. That's something that we need to recognize God's hand in. It's not, they're not little things. They're major things. Stephanie, I love that you don't whitewash the pain. I love that you're able to use your experience to help other people. And I think being real in this world that where everything is so fake, it's so it's so hard to, to find people that will be real with you. That is such a gift that you give to women around you because so many people can see themselves a bit in your story. It might be different details, but, and that message of, of leaning on gratitude is very profound. Is there anything you want to leave us with? Any message uh, before we say goodbye? I know, it's, uh, we, and and you you and I know that we can uh, we can unpack for hours, you know. But um, I I do I do want to leave with a with a quote. I'm very big into them, and again on Instagram I write you know my son these little lunchbox love notes, but I share it with with the world because there's lessons there. Um, so I'm very big into quotes. And again, I'm going to quote Victor Frankl. And I read this in Dr. Edith Ager's book, The Choice. And she is my real life like hero, my living hero. She is a Holocaust survivor and she should live and be well until 120. But she quoted Victor Frankl, Dr. Victor Frankl, also a Holocaust survivor. And, and, and in the book, it says, between stimulus and response is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Now my space started 10 years ago and, I, and, and it's gonna to continue to grow for as long as I live, but I will always use my power to respond with gratitude and hashkacha pratis, God's divine intervention in my life because I've seen tremendous, tremendous personal growth and freedom. Thank you, Stephanie, that was just so beautiful. You should be blessed. You should only have good things mm-hmm. in your life. Amen. Okay. Thank, you, Thank you so much. Now, I want to, shalom. Thank you. Bye, Stephanie. Mwah. Mwah. I want to let everyone know about an amazing program that Partners in Torah runs. It's this one on one learning opportunity where anyone could sign up and learn with a partner. I think about my connection to Stephanie. It goes back maybe 15 years. I think about how precious it is that I have someone that I could be with in good times and in hard times and in any time. It's because th- there's this need for connection that is just so innate in human beings. We need real connection. And that's what partners, sorry, that's what Jay Inspire is offering over here. <laughs> One-on-one partnership to learn anything. Let's roll a video to show you all about that. My name is Desi Rotenberg. I'm Nivin Burns in Arizona. I've been part of Project Inspire for almost a year now. I'm from Brazil and I have been a part of the one-on-one learning program for over a year now. I just didn't have a Jewish education. My parents are from the former Soviet Union where it was illegal to learn. Uh, I grew up in a family where unfortunately Judaism and the culture was not passed down. So I didn't know anything coming into this program. We talk about everything from life to liberty to the pursuit of happiness. We started learning once a week. She has made such a huge impact in my life and she just really met me where I was in a totally non-judgmental way. So whatever comes up with relation to Judaism and Torah and Talmud and Mishnah and Kabbalah, anything, we just kind of 
talk about it and put it out there. Project Inspire has enriched my life by enabling me to set aside 30 minutes to an hour each week and dedicate time to learning about different schools of thought. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't know how to read Hebrew. It's really beautiful to see how Judaism shapes my everyday life, where I would have never even realized that before. So I highly recommend getting matched up with a one-on-one -on -one partner if you are looking for a personalized way to stay connected with Judaism in your busy life. I'm very much looking forward to growing in my Judaism and my faith and having a stronger impact on the world around me because of it. Thank you Project Inspire and I can't thank you enough so thanks. So amazing, so beautiful, such a great opportunity for anyone, anywhere, it's incredible. We're gonna bring on our next guest, Shanzel Antelis, who you heard before in that music video. Now she's coming to us live from her living room. And I wanna just give a little bit of a bio. There's so much to say about this amazing, talented woman. Shanzel is a songwriter, a singer, who has been touring with her original music since she was 18 and wants to inspire women and girls to feel happy and good about themselves. She was, she was the first Orthodox woman to put out a full-fledged music video in 2010 and has four albums to date. All of Shandel's music is on iTunes and Spotify and under Shandel and Telus on all social media platforms. Let's welcome Shandel. Telus here and I'm so excited to be part of the Shabbat project with you this week. We're doing a Shabbat show extravaganza. Super exciting. I'm going to be singing some songs with you. Thank you so much Eve for that beautiful introduction. You are the best. And did you guys like that music video for Jews all around the world? That was literally filmed in Israel, in California, in New York, lots of different places. And I hope the message can really help you feel the whole purpose of the Shabbat project, bringing Jews together from all around the world. So let me hear you sing. Did you get the words for that video? Let's go. Jews all around the world. Your turn. Sing it with me. Let's go. Jews all around the world. Jews all around the world. I hope you guys like that one. And now we're going to sing a little bit together. So here is Odiovo Shalom Aleinu. May there be peace among the world. And we're going to have a peaceful weekend, that's for sure, because there are over a million people participating in this Shabbat project. That is incredible. So sing along with me, grab a chair, put an arm around your sister or your mom, whoever, whichever lady is next to you right now, and sing along with me. Here we go. Oniyavo shalom aleinu, oniyavo shalom aleinu, oniyavo shalom aleinu, ve'akul. Our hands together. Oniyavo shalom aleinu, oniyavo shalom aleinu, oniyavo shalom aleinu, ve'akul. That's right. Salam aleinu ve'akul. Shalom Aleinu, Odi Mo Shalom Aleinu, Odi Mo Shalom Aleinu, we are who long sing along. Odi Mo Shalom Aleinu, Odi Mo Shalom Aleinu, Odi Mo Shalom Aleinu, we are who long hands together. Salam Aleinu, we are who long. Let's go. Odibo shalom aleinu. Odibo shalom aleinu. Odibo shalom aleinu. Ve'akulam. Let's go. Odibo shalom aleinu. Odibo shalom aleinu. Odibo shalom aleinu. Ve'akulam. Let's go. Salam. Oh, 
Audio shalom aleinu. Audio bo shalom. That's right, everybody. Audio bo shalom aleinu. We all put our hands together. Audio bo shalom aleinu. Audio bo shalom aleinu. Audio bo shalom aleinu. We all put our. That's right, salam aleinu. We all put our salam, 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 salam aleinu. We all put our salam, 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 salam aleinu. We all put our salam, 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 salam. Aleinu be'akol ha'olam Salam, salam Woo! That was super fun. I got energy just singing that with you guys. That was super awesome. Thanks for singing along at home. I'm sure you guys sounded great, although I couldn't hear you through my screen, but I believe that you did. Um, so let's do another quick song. This is called Thank You Hashem, and it's totally taking storm over here. The whole world is, you know, going crazy over this song. And it's definitely a nice message. You know, sometimes we don't always feel like saying thank you, God, because we're like, we're like, why God? You know what I mean? But I guess when we thank him, hopefully he'll see that we appreciate the good that he sends and maybe he'll send us more good, God willing. Um, but either way, it's a fun song. It's an easy song. Please sing along. It goes like this. Sing after me. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. Your turn. Nice, I'll do it again. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. One more time, you guys. Perfect, so that goes three times, and then I'll sing you the fourth line. It's a little bit different, so here we go. It goes, I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. Again, I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. So that was three times, and the fourth time goes, Thank you, Hashem. One more time, let's warm up together. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. That's right. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. I think that we are ready. Okay, let's go. Here we go. Thank you, Hashem. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. I did it, I, 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 I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem, thank you, Hashem, sing along with me. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem, I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem, I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem, thank you, Hashem, you sound great, let's go. I did it, I, 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 thank you, Hashem. Everybody have a beautiful Shabbos. Sing along. Everybody have a beautiful Shabbos. Have a beautiful Shabbos. Amazing. Thank you, Shanezel. You are such a gift to the world and to women all around the world. Keep doing what you're doing. I'd like to introduce a really incredible video that we're going to show right now. But wait, before, before you roll the video, I think every woman knows what it's like to be overwhelmed by life, to be running on this treadmill and finally, finally, just permission to get off and to relax and to stop checking everything and just to be. And that's what Shabbos gives us. And sometimes when I rush into Shabbat and I light my candles, I feel like I could almost cry. Like there's this peace, there's this just arriving, finally. It's such a gift. And Rebetzin Yemima Mizrahi, she says that the word Shabbat, she, she looks at that word and she says it has Shabbat. Shh, my daughter, it's okay. You could stop doing, you could just be. So let's turn our attention to the video right now. Very powerful video written by my friend, Adina Stillerman. Let's take it away. 
As I spend day after day confined to my home, my thoughts are anything but confined. They travel at lightning speed around the world to China, Italy, Israel. I see shopping malls, airlines, schools. Everything has been completely shut down. I have so many questions. After all of this is over, which businesses will survive? Which institutions will survive? Which of us will survive? And will it ever be over? Will the world ever be the same? No one has the answers right now. We're all in total darkness. Will someone please shed a little light? Ah, uh, light. A little candle can go a long way in a dark world. I always wondered if that's why Jews are so obsessed with candles and fire. Think about it. We've been lighting fires for thousands of years. We bring in Shabbat with fire. We take out Shabbat with fire. And we do the same for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and every other holiday around the year. On Hanukkah, we spend a whole week obsessively lighting candles. On Lagba Omer, we set the whole world ablaze. In every synagogue, we have that little everlasting flame. And of course, when someone passes away, we light a little candle to remember them. What is this obsession with fire? Maybe we're trying to access a certain type of light, a light far brighter than any physical light, that spiritual light that's existed since the beginning of time. You see, if you go back in time, way back, you'll find that both scientists and creationists remarkably agree on something, that everything in the universe started with light. If the sun didn't exist yet, where did this light come from? This light, dear friends, was the powerful light of the spiritual world. It was the fiery soul that exists within you and me. Everything in the physical world is like a mirror, reflecting the deeper spiritual elements of life. So why is the human soul compared to a candle? Look at it this way. The world was created with four elements. Water, air, earth, and fire. Each of these elements naturally has its own unique direction. Water flows downward. Air moves in all directions. Earth is passive, unmoving without an outside force. And fire's nature is to rise like a human soul. Flames must breathe, change, grow. They strive against the darkness and ultimately one day fade away, all the while rising, facing upwards, no matter which way the candle turns. The flickering of candlelight reminds us of the precious fragility of life, a life that must be cherished, focused on the things that really matter. When I light my Shabbat candles, it's my unique reminder of the light in the world that is often so hard to see that I'm just too distracted to notice. It's in the moment that my hands pass over the tip of the dancing flames that I feel the warmth of the fiery soul that connects us all. And you know what? When I light my candles, I think of the millions that came before me who lit their candles in the darkest parts of our history. And when I think of them, I realize I'm not alone. I am part of the greatest legacy of what it means to be a light unto the nations. So this Shabbat, let us live that legacy and be the light. Wow, what a powerful, powerful video and message. And I'll tell you, it's been a bit of a hard year or two. I lost both of my grandmothers in the last two years. And with COVID, I haven't been able to see any family. My family's in Israel and in Canada and in South Africa. And here we are in our little neck of the woods and I miss family. But every Friday night when I light my Shabbat candles and I bring it in and cover my eyes, I think, who has touched me? Who has put their hands on my face so lovingly? If not my grandmothers and my mother who took care of me and dressed me when I was a kid and took care of me when I was sick. And I just feel connected to women all around, different generations going all the way back to our matriarch, Sarah. We're all so connected in this beautiful mitzvah, in the beauty of ushering in the Shabbat. So thank you for that beautiful video. And now I'd like to bring upon our next guest, Chaya Appel Fishman, who is coming in from Baltimore. Chaya, where are you coming from? Baltimore, right? I know you grew up in Cleveland. Chaya is the founder of JWE, the Jewish Women's Entrepreneurs, 
a national nonprofit that helps Jewish women launch and grow successful businesses and organizations. Professionally, Chaya is a corporate and an MA, M, M and a lawyer representing investors as well as middle market and emerging growth companies in a wide range of transactional matters. Most importantly, she is the mommy to Aaron, Ellie, and Ayelet, and an accomplished Lego master. That's really, really good to put there on your bio, Chaya. Welcome. <laughs> Most impressive thing that I do. Well, I'm sure you have a cape somewhere, like a superwoman cape, because when I spoke to you this week, you were wearing a baby and a baby Bjorn and chasing another one up the hill. And I don't sure. know how you do it all, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Welcome to our show. Hi, th thanks, Eve. Thanks for having me. Um, so I think you covered most of the bases in the introduction. Thank you for that. Um, Maybe you know, jump right in and tell yeah. us what are you working on right now? What's your passion right now? Okay, well, I'm passionate about raising children who are givers. I'm passionate about helping women through my work with the JWE. That's the Jewish Woman Entrepreneur. Um, and I'm really passionate about bridge building that is connecting people and communities from diverse backgrounds, which is why um, this project is so exciting to me. And that emphasis on unity is so exciting to me. Um, in terms of like what I'm up to at this very moment, um, not very different than from when we spoke last. Uh, I My four month old baby, literally a minute before we went live, woke up and I've got a bunch of transactional documents, boring things lawyer things minimize on my browser. And uh, I've got vegan, gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free uh, pumpkin muffins in my oven for Shabbat. So we're, we're it's going to be a long night. That's, That's what I'm up to now. What, what keeps you balanced? You're holding a lot. You so really seem, <laughs> I don't, I'm overwhelmed just hearing. <laughs> okay. So that, that question is actually a really good segue to talking about Shabbat in general, I think that really the only way to sort of balance it all or balance some is to be really good at setting boundaries and to ruthlessly prioritize. And I think that's something that's really incredible about Shabbat is if you think about it, it really, Shabbat sets this sort of mandatory boundary. And, you know, we often tell ourselves, I know that I'll tell myself, I'm never going to answer a, you know, I'm never going to answer emails during bedtime. I'm not going to join conference calls that are during dinner time. And I set these boundaries and somehow, you know, more often than not, they slip and they, they sort of get pushed aside. And, you know, no matter what though, no matter if I'm working on a, you know, transaction worth hundreds of millions of dollars, it, it doesn't matter how important whatever business matter I'm working on is come, you know, sun, you know, sunset on Friday and really everything mundane, it just, it has to stop. It has to end. And there's this built in designated time for myself, for my family, you know, time with my husband, time with my children, um, time for myself to really reflect on the week, on my role in the universe, on the things that are important to me. And I think that, you know, if I didn't have that to sort of recenter me at the end of a really chaotic, chaotic week, um, I think it would just be one really, really long, fast moving train. And so I really find that the concept of Shabbat is so integral to actually finding that center and to finding that balance. So that's, you know, that's how I'd say I find balance. I'm sure you've heard this very famous quote, more than the Jews keep Shabbat, Shabbat keeps the Jews. Yeah. So it's really helping you keep balance and keep your sanity, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And is there a message you'd like to leave us with tonight? A message for all the women just to empower them because we're all holding so much in our lives and, and we feel like we just can't do it all. What would you say? So I think, you know, when I think about um, sending a message just in the, within the framework of, you know, Shabbat and balance and, you know, the power of women. And I, and I liked how you started off in your introduction talking about, you know, women, the power of women. We're so many things, right? We're creators, we're dreamers, we're builders. Um, there's so much power and Judaism really celebrates so much the, you know, the power of women. And, you know, when we sort of kick off, you know, the Shabbat experience, there's, you know, the candle lighting. And then when you sort of transition, which I want to talk about in a second, but when you transition to 
the Shabbat meal, really one of the introductory components is we sing Eisha Chayel, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of like a poem of, you know, the, the woman of valor, this, you know, and it's, it's a celebration. It's ultimately a celebration of women. And what's really unique about it is the, you go through stanza by stanza and it, it really gives you some insight into how Judaism celebrates so many different roles of women and those roles that they play both inside of the home and outside of the home. And, you know, sometimes I'll just, I can read Hebrew, but I like to actually read through the English because you go through it and the, you know, Aisha Kyle discusses, you know, women as, you know, this an ideal woman, and she's involved in international trade. She's a philanthropist. She's doing real estate deals. She's crazy about her kids. She's supporting her husband. You know, maybe she she also um, owns a vineyard. You know, it's like you go through it, and the the the, the purpose for me is it's really it's a reflection of a celebration of women and the many, many things that we do and the roles that we play and, you know, how Judaism really appreciates and celebrates those things and how empowerment can mean so many different things, right? You can be empowered in so many different ways and all of that is beautiful and there's a place for you. There's a place for you in Judaism. There's a place for you around the Shabbat table. There's a place and there's a powerful place for you. And I would say my message would be no matter what you do, no matter what stage of life you're at, um, whether you're a single mom, whether, you know, whether you're single, whether you're a mom, whether you're a single mom, whether you're a grandmother, whether you're, you know, whether you have a vibrant career, whether you're, you know, you've thrown your all into your family full time, whatever it is, when Shabbat comes, it's really your moment and it's the time to really celebrate you. And, you know, traditionally we usher in the Shabbat, you know, that video just sort of captured it, how, you know, we usher the Shabbat in by lighting the candles and just tying this back to, you know, my, my previous thought on balance, I would say, you know, that's our moment as women to really bring in, when I light the candles, you know, there's this, you kind of traditionally, there's this circular motion you do with your hands. And I sort of envision that I'm bringing in joy and peace and serenity into my home. And I'm sort of shoving out all the chaos, shoving out all the, you know, the icky stuff. And I think if you could really center and use that time, you could, it can be transformational for you. It could be transformational for your family as you sort of set the tone for what the weekend's going to, is going to look like. And, you know, for me, it's, it's about accepting that wh whatever happened the week during the week, I've done my best. And now God's going to kick in. The world's got to do its thing. God's got to do his thing oh, and, you know, and just bring it in, bring in the good thing. Wow. So Maya, thank you so, so much. Thank you for coming on and good luck in all of your amazing endeavors. You have a lot of co-op, a lot of strength. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We, we all are kind of super women in a way, right? We balance a lot. Let's just turn it over to a very short video of our, our friend, Esty Stoller from New York, from Jay Inspire, who... <laughs> She's a panic. If, if anyone knows Esty, you just, you just, there's only one Esty. There's, she's one in a billion, gazillion. And Esty is a, a momentum city leader and an amazing lady. Let's roll that little short clip. Ah, I just drove through the streets with all these balloons. But there's a purpose because, oh, we are like balloons. God blew into us. And now in these days, sometimes when we're down, we have to be filled with hope. H-O-P-E. H is Hashem and happiness. O is to feel optimism and see the opportunity every day. P is positivity and the possibility that being here offers an E and Muna. We need that faith. We need that endurance. So remember, if someone tries to burst your balloon, ah, or tries to stop you, just soar, let it go, and enjoy every day. You have the opportunity to make a difference. Ah, enjoy. That's awesome. Thank you, Esty. You are really, really one of a kind in all of your color, in all of your glory. We love you so much. Thank you for that message. And you know what? It's so true. We need to sometimes lower the bar and be okay with ourselves maybe not make the most extravagant meals, 
it's not about that. It's not about how, how fancy we could do things. It's just about like being calm and present for the people at our table, being calm and serene for ourselves. That's what it's all about. So thank you, Esti, and thank you, Chaya. And now I'm just, we're gonna do something a little different over here. <laughs> Never been done before on a Project Inspire um, event, but there has been this challenge that has kind of gone viral all around the world. And it's called the Jerusalem Dance Challenge. And this really took off. It started in Africa. It was actually, the song was made into an African anthem, okay? And the words are so beautiful, all about Jerusalem being our home, be, take me home to Jerusalem. And during this pandemic, when so many people just needed to hold on to something, this was what pulled people through. It gave people fun. People have been doing this dance challenge all over the world. So a friend of mine, her name is... Tamar Rothenberg from Miami. She runs Gems Miami uh, Momentum Group and she got all her women together and they did this challenge. So we're gonna put the video on for you. We're gonna put the words up on the screen first so you can see the beautiful words. And I'm telling you this song and this dance is kind of addictive. It's gonna be so much fun, but you have to get out of your seat. Okay, there are the words over there. Jerusalem, my home, rescue me, join me, don't leave me here. We all feel that way right now. And Jerusalem is really what connects us. So let's put it on. Let's do this unity with 160 million people around the world. Okay, let's do it. You have to dance. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Adelante. Al lado, volteando. Atrás. Tres pasos. Uno, dos, tres. Empezamos. Jerusalem, Israel, me, I don't know where. Oh, I'm ben ami, zoom and shila na. Jerusalem, Israel, me. in an African safari and all of these African-American, African men are, are, are dancing to Jerusalem. It's just so beautiful because Jerusalem really is the heart of the world. And that's also something that connects us all. So when we brainstormed and worked on this program, it was so apropos that we would end this program together by going down to the heart of the world together with you all. And we're gonna go right now, we're gonna, Lauren Levitt and her husband are bravely dodging the rain in Jerusalem because it's been raining all week. 
and they're meeting with Debbie Hirsch right now in the old city of Jerusalem. Let's go there. And I know that this is something that I miss very, very much. I was supposed to be in Israel leading a trip this week and that's not happening and we're not in control, but maybe this will fill our buckets a little bit. Hi everyone, this is Debbie Hurst from Laughter Games Workshop coming to you live from the old city of Jerusalem here in Israel. Can you guess where we are? You're right, we're at the Kotel. Come, let's get a little bit closer. So excited you're joining me. Come on, let's go. We're almost there, come on. Even though we walk down the stairs to get to the hotel, we're always going up to the hotel. We're almost there. I want everybody to close their eyes for a moment and think of a prayer. And even though you're not here physically, spiritually you are, because I feel you. In fact, while I was coming to the hotel, I lived just a few minutes away, I was thinking, wow, there's something really missing here in the old city. And that's you. But I feel you. I feel that you're here. You're here with us spiritually. So close your eyes. You got a prayer? Come, let's get a little bit closer. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Oh my goodness! You know what I was doing? I was dodging all your prayers. I want everybody to close your eyes now and we'll all pray together. All of us. Imagine you're here with me, all the sisters together. We are all here together praying. I feel your prayers coming. You don't know that Jerusalem misses you even more than you miss Jerusalem. You know, I know what you're missing. Besides the hotel, you're missing falafel, aren't you? I got a little falafel story for you. You know, when we first moved to Israel about 25 years ago, it was a little bit scary. I wasn't sure. Did I make the right move? I remember going to buy a falafel. I'm holding my little baby, and I'm trying to pay for the falafel. I'm having a little bit of a hard time. So the falafel man says to me, Tavi, 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 which means give me, give me. And I'm thinking, my baby? I mean, I'm from New York. You don't give the falafel guy your baby in New York. Well, I give him my baby because he looks pretty harmless. And as I'm getting my change to pay for the falafel, I look over at him and I see this beautiful old man with dark skin and a white beard holding my baby and singing to him as if he was his own grandson. And I thought to myself, wow, I must be home. And I'm thinking of all of you now coming here and being home. <laughs> wow, Debbie, I can't thank you enough. I'm choked up. I, I didn't I knew I missed Israel, but I didn't realize how much how much I missed it and just being there with you. And please God, we should be there again soon in person and really be able to walk down those cobblestones to the hotel and put our hands on it and, and say, I'm, I'm home, I'm home. We're all missing it. Thank you so much for taking us, even in the rain, even at night. We appreciate that so much. I'm sure everyone really felt something tingling inside. That was precious. Okay. I think it is almost time to wrap up our hour. Let's see the time. Oh, we only have three more minutes together. And this was an incredible hour of women's power. We focused on unity and connection and sharing the beauty of Shabbat. We met incredible people, Stephanie and Shindel and Debbie and Chaya. And we sang, we danced, maybe we even put a prayer there at the wall. We watched, we just took it all in and we had such an amazing hour. I thank you ladies for joining me for this time together. And please God, soon we should really come together and hold hands, no masks, and sing and dance together in Jerusalem. May that be soon. Now listen, stay seated because we are gonna be moving over right now from Portland, Oregon to the studio in New Jersey.
where Charlie Harari is waiting to greet you all for the next part of this program. And it is going to be power because Charlie is power. So stay with me, ladies. Have your husbands join. Have your friends join. Come on. You could join on every, every place, every form of media. It's the streaming live all over the world. And I'm looking forward to spending the next two hours with you enjoying the program. So have a wonderful Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is not to be missed. Thank you to all the incredible people that worked with me on this program at, at Project Inspire, Lauren and Miriam and Yossi and all the great people. You guys, what's so special about you is that you are so, what we say in Hebrew, l'shem shamayim, for the sake of heaven. And I feel it, I felt it in every step of this process. And it's just incredible to be connected to such people like yourselves. So thank you, you should be blessed. And everyone, Shabbat Shalom, stay where you are. You're gonna be connected in less than one minute. Mwah. Bye everybody, Shabbat Shalom.